us receive like precious faith with us. You've got to get it the same way the disciples got it. You've got to receive it the same way the disciples did. You've got to be built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. It was us in 2 Peter. It was us in Acts 11. It is us in Acts 2 and 39. For the promises unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We've got to become convinced uh, that this is the truth. Uh, you say, you're small-minded. Uh, I'm not small-minded. He's small-minded. Uh, and he made a narrow way and a straight gate. Uh, there's not a whole lot of willy-nilly messing up that we're all loving and worshiping the same God. The reason many of us uh, have trouble being committed to the truth and being committed to the life that God has laid for us uh, is we're not convinced uh, that this is the truth. If we were convinced that this indeed is the way, that the only way to salvation is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We wouldn't have any trouble with our commitment. Take me back to our 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Back up one more, verse 1. 2 Peter 1 and 1. says, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is important for us to, to realize from the Word that it is in no way, no way, shape, form, or fashion our righteousness that brings salvation. But it is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, who according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, who knew no sin, yet became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. The righteousness of God is how you obtain the like precious faith, but you have to obtain it, you have to be chosen. That word obtain actually means the same as chosen by lot. You have to have chosen. You have to be called out. Uh, everybody that's got one eye and half a brain just can't show up uh, and say, I believe, and they're saved. Uh, you have got to be chosen. You have got to be called. You've got to be set apart. Uh, you've got to be obedient to the Word of God. And you have to be in the likeness uh, of His death, burial, and resurrection. We've started treating too much of the Word like it's optional. Like it's multiple choice. We've got to take the word of God and we've got to apply it to our life so we can be saved. Amen. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now look at here. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now he's already talking to people. Listen to me. He's already speaking to people. This is so important. He is already speaking to people that have obtained like precious faith. They've already experienced salvation by grace. Amen? But he says grace and peace be multiplied unto you Grace and peace be multiplied. Brother McKinney, they've already experienced the grace of God by bringing salvation to their souls. For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace is not referring only to the unmerited favor of God, but is referring to the grace that resides within us through the power of the Holy Ghost that teaches us to deny the world. The Bible says in the book of Titus, Now the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. He's talking about the grace being multiplied in you. He's talking about the grace of God being that teaches us, uh, that motivates us, uh, and enables us to be pleasing to Him. The same grace that saves you is the same grace that will keep you saved. And peace multiplied. Embracing the spirit of peace. That while not being contingent upon the things of the world, the things of the world cannot affect the peace of God. Unless, of course, you allow them to. 
The spirit of peace is not contingent upon the things of the world, but it affects the things of the world. And the spirit of peace is identified by complete trust in the Lord and not leaning upon the shaky foundation of man, but the unmovable foundation of God. The Bible says, uh, and in the book of Philippians, I believe chapter number three, but I'm, I'm not 100% about that, but it's in the book of Philippians. Uh, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I'm talking about about the word of God saving you. I'm talking about the word of God helping you. I'm talking about when you're walking through a storm, you need to commit that word to your mind. And the Bible says, be careful, don't worry about anything. But get God involved in every area of your life. Pray, 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 pray. How much of the mess we deal with is when we wade off into it of our own accord and then we start crying out to God to help us. The thing is, listen to me, the thing is, Brother Rice, is he's teaching us how to stop that from happening. The Lord don't want your life to be miserable. The Lord don't want your life to be jacked up. The Lord don't get any glory of pulling you out of your mess. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Multiplied unto you. Multiplied. Multiplied. What does multiplied mean? Rapidly increasing. Because one times one is one. One times two is two. Then three. Then three times two is six. And then six times two is twelve. And twelve times two is twenty-four. And twenty-four times two is forty-eight. And 48 times 2 is 96. And it goes on, it's rapidly increasing. But how does it come? Listen to me right now. Please listen to me. Don't turn me off. I try not to get bored. I try to say something funny or something stupid or, or make a crazy face or, or something to keep your attention. You can't miss this. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Is there anybody interested in that? Anybody, does that excite anybody? Does that entice anybody? Does that, does that sound like something that you want? I had somebody the other night reach out to me. I don't even know him from Adam. Never laid eyes on him. Never laid eyes on him. But they're they battling spirits. They don't even live here. They were connected to me by somebody else and sent a message. And, and I, gave them, I gave them scriptures, Brother Billy. They said, I need some help. I gave them scriptures. And, and I gave her several scriptures. And I gave her some to commit to memory. And I, I put some in there. And, you know, like in, like in uh, eight seconds, she texted me back. Okay, tried it. Didn't work. She said, can somebody come pray over me and make it go away? That's what we're all looking for, Brother Billy. Now you listen to me. Listen to me well. We're all looking for the Shazam moment. Ooh, pow! Oh, thank God it's gone. Ooh, that's what we want. We want it today. We want it right now. We want it this minute, and we want God to do it. And I'm going to pray like three times in a row, and if he ain't done it, I'm doing something else because it ain't his will. Come on, now listen to me. That ain't where it comes from. That's why, you listen to me, that's why you come to church and get a dynamite blessing. Boy, you feel the Holy Ghost just flowing over you, man. You just feel the power of God. You talk in tongues like, you know, reading words in a Chinese phone book. I mean, just over and over again. And then you go get in your car, and all them problems are still right there. And then people become discouraged because all of a sudden, they, I, I can't tell you, I've got so many text messages, I, I, I need to delete some of them. If I've got so many, I'm struggling, I'm discouraged, I'm down, I need help. And that's just the ones that reach out to me. There's a bunch of you in the same boat that just won't reach out. I can see it on your face. Today, this morning, right now. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what?
What does through mean? Grace and peace be multiplied to you through. What does that tell me? The avenue by which it's going to happen is what? I thought it, I just knew we needed to have a Sunday night shout down and I'd be good. I've thought that before. I've said that before. Boy, if we could have one of them Sunday night services like we used to have, it would fix all my problems. Come on now. Stay with me. I've even thought, you listen to me, Brother Ray, I've even thought that maybe I wasn't even really called to preach because I can't do like some of them preachers and just read half of a verse and preach for two hours and never go back to the Bible again. Really, I thought that. There must be something wrong with me. I use like 12 scriptures every sermon. Something wrong with me. Because you go to a camp meeting and you hear a guy, he'll read the Bible, read one scripture, fold it up, put it over to the side, and never use another scripture the whole sermon. So Stephanie, I thought maybe something was wrong with me. Listen to me. This is what I really thought. I got to use the Bible as a crutch because I ain't smart enough to think up all that stuff by myself. Brother Pete, the Bible says, God have mercy. If we could, man, Lord, Brother Billy, I, I believe with all of my heart that you're going through hell on earth, uh, that one of the most dyed-in-the-wool solutions for you is to get up out of your bed, get your lazy carcass up out of your lazy boy, and turn off the cotton-picking television. Joel ain't got the answer for you. The book is in the, the, the answer is in the Word of God. And crack open that Bible. Listen to me. I, I even told that girl this the other day. You crack open that Bible and say, well, I just don't know the Bible very much. Let me tell you a good place to start. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the... I feel it, brother. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And guess what happened then, Sister Virginia? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face. Oh, my goodness. And then all of a sudden, you start realizing, devil, this ain't your world. Problems, this ain't your world. My God, the one, the one that's inside of me, the same Spirit that's living in me, He's the one that made this world. And all things that are in it. Great, look at me. I'm not making this stuff up. It's in the book. We become so schooled. I've got to feel the Holy Ghost goosebumps and I've got to talk in tongues and I believe in all that stuff. But there's more power. It's a more sure word than even a voice out of heaven. You listen to me right now. What did the, what did the, the rich man tell Father Abraham. Send Lazarus down here to dip some water. And then the second thing is, send Lazarus to my brothers because they'll believe somebody that came back from the dead. That's a lie. We had that happen around here. And there was people that witnessed it. You know what he told him, Brother Robbie? You know what he told him? They got Moses. God have mercy. Sister Betty, that thing folded open on your lap right there is the most powerful source in the entire world. It is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Samantha put on Facebook about memories of, of, of Sister Bernice, and, and that's one of them I have in my mind. And she quoted that verse one time. She quoted to me 10,000 times in Sunday school class. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Through the knowledge of God. Lord Jesus. Take me to Romans chapter 10, Brother Mark. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Listen to me. You listen to me right now. 
if we really grasp a hold of what I'm preaching this morning, we don't daze off into space, find ourselves going to sleep. What do you do when you're driving and about to fall asleep? Do you just sit there? Here, here's what I've done. Open up the window and hang your head out. And bugs splat you in the face. That'll keep you awake. Turn the radio up real loud. We'll do all kinds of things. If we grasp a hold of what I'm preaching to us this morning, you'll start seeing people bringing a trash can to church with them. You say, I don't think we need to do that. We'll hand out some masks if you're scared. Well, I'm sick, and I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling very good, and my head hurts, and, the, you know, that music's too loud and stuff. Rain on that junk. Rain on that. Because, you know why I can't stay home? Now, it, there's sometimes you have to. There's sometimes you have to. My wife wouldn't let me come to church and preach after I had that super-duper dope on my kidney stone. They shot some stuff to me. If I came and preached, ain't no telling what I might have would have said. And that's what she told me. I said, I'm going to church. I got home at 730. I said, I can lay down for an hour and get dressed and go to church. They gave me a shot of Delauded. I was in another world, Brother Pete. I didn't know where I was. That was some bad stuff. So sometimes you got to stay home. But now we record our sermons and we put them on the Internet. And here's why you can't just play hooky because I don't feel good or I'm mad or my feelings are hurt. Blah, 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 blah. Because there's a word going to come forth. Let me tell you something, Brother Billy, and I'm going to tell you this right now in front of God and everybody. Not just you, but I want you to hear it. I'm not even talking about you, as a matter of fact, but you happen to sit in the front and you got on a red shirt. Catches my eye all the time. <laughs> I have received a word from God specifically for an individual. And I showed up to preach it, and they weren't here. Think about that. What in your life is so important for you to miss out on the answer you've been looking for? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, under, you, you understand, feel what I'm saying. Look at here. Boy, I got a, I, I toe stepped a little bit right there. I can feel it. But it's all good. Ain't it, Brother Billy? You know, Brother Billy hugged my neck the other night and told me how much he appreciated my preaching and teaching. Brother, you don't know what that means. That means because the old devil will jump on your shoulder, Brother Pete. I don't care how good I preach. don't care how much anointing you walk in. The devil will hop on your shoulder and say, you done made everybody mad. But he don't know I got a word from the Lord that said, I'm trying to make folks mad. Stop getting in the way. Sister Connie, I got a word from the Lord at men's conference. He said, I'm trying to change some people. But you're so worried about their feelings, you won't let me do it. I feel the Holy Ghost right now, Brother Pete. That's why, Callie, that's why the word of God, what I'm preaching this morning, will change somebody's life if they grasp a hold of it. Because that knowledge, look at here, that no peace and grace multiplied unto you through the knowledge Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That's our, all of our prayer. Amen? Next verse. For I bear them record that they have a zeal. Somebody tell me what zeal means. Excited, enthused. Boy, they're all about it. And they were, Brother Pete. Those Pharisees and Sadducees that give Jesus such a hard time, they were really sincere about what they believed. They thought so much of it, Courtney, that they killed Jesus because he conflicted with it. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Look at here. But not according to knowledge. There's that word again. Verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness. Now, I've got to say that again. I've got to qualify. We use the word ignorant in a negatively connotated context when in fact it just means absence of knowledge. You know, remember, I've used this, I'm ignorant, Brother Jackie, about how to fly a jet airplane. You put me in the cockpit of one and tell me to fly it, we're all going to be in trouble. I, but it's because I'm ignorant. All right?
right, you give me about five minutes to show me what two or three of them buttons are, and it'll be on like a pot of neck bones, but I'm just teasing. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, if we can for just a minute, I don't have that ability yet, though we've got a new Easy Worship program, and once they get it figured out, I may be able to. But I want you to go to this first comma here after God's righteousness and just leave out the part in going about to establish their own righteousness. Take that out. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Listen to me right now. Listen to Why have they not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God? They don't know it. Well, let me just, before we get all so excited and say, boy, I can get away with that because I'm dumb, because I'm ignorant. Listen to me. Ignorance ain't no excuse. You tell a state trooper you didn't know what speed limit was. You know what he's going to tell you? You will next time. After you have a couple hundred dollars less in your billfold to remind you of it. Boy, if y'all would hang with me, if y'all would hang with me to about one o'clock, boy, we could, we could make some tracks. Mama said she'd stay with me. Mama, I love you so much and you're in the minority. Oh. I ain't sure I got to get it. If I, st <laughs> if I preach to one o'clock, I will. So since, listen to me right now. I love you to death, Miss Francis. I really do. Since they don't know the righteousness of God, they try to establish in their own mind this is unbelievable. This, this is unbelievable. They, what do you think the entire world does? Figures out what's right for them. By what they feel or about what their peers say or about what the world says or about what's on the cover of People magazine. Or Us Weekly or some of them crazy things. I don't know if they make the inquiry anymore. That used to be what we said. going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Look, with the increased knowledge of the things of God comes multiplied grace and peace. The opposite of that results, ignorance results in folks with a zeal for God, but it's not according to knowledge. Ignorance causes righteousness to be sought within yourself while knowledge recognizes that all righteousness comes from God and we can only achieve it by being submitted to Him. Apparently, ignorant zeal isn't enough to save you by itself. There must also be a desire and a hunger for knowledge and you will be blessed with that desire being met because the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 5, what? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Where do you think we find the righteousness of God? In the book. Let me see. <laughs> It'd be a beautiful thing. You listen to me now. It'd be a beautiful thing. Because... Cody, really what the way it's supposed to work is that our everyday prayer life takes care of all the things we've been working on in pre-service prayer. And we should be able to show up for pre-service prayer preparing our hearts and minds for this. For this. But it would be a beautiful thing. 
if before church people that are struggling, people are having issues, people, sometimes, listen to me, sometimes I'm not damning and condemning you. So I know what it's like to be so hustle bustle of the day and the first time I realize I hadn't prayed is right before my eyes shut at night. I know what that's like. It's very easy. The, the flesh and the enemy will put all kinds of things in your path. But I'm telling you right now, if you feel like you can't pray, if you feel like you don't have no direction, break your Bible open. Open it up. And begin to read it to the Lord. Which in fact you're reading it to yourself. And grace and peace will be multiplied to you through the knowledge through the knowledge. You say, well, i got to read the whole Bible. My God, have mercy. Eventually. Eventually. But we're going to find a passage just like mine, and I've shared it with you all. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 3, 4, and 5. I noticed Kesley put something on Facebook that I remember her testifying about like two or three years ago. It's something that's got in her heart. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points. Is that not right? As all points, tempted like as we are, yet without sin. It's knowledge, Brother Billy. It's something that you get in there. I know. Say, well, I don't understand things real good. I'm promising you, there's about a half a dozen in there that you can pull out that'll be your rock through no matter what you, what you go through, no matter what you're battling through, the answer is in there. Now, I can't get to it today. Because I don't have any money, Miss Francis. I was really going to preach to 1 o'clock, but I'm out of money, so I can't buy you no dinner. Well, then we're in bad shape then. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Brother Billy can take care of both of us. But I'm going to show you in the very next verse. Let's go to it, Brother Mark, and then I'm going to close. God have mercy. When the first time I read this, it like amazed me. It amazed me. Because, Brother McKinney, there's so much of our life that is dictated to us by the, by the things we don't know. By questions. I've preached a golly whopping amount of funerals now. Working at the funeral home, I hear a lot. And, and almost every one of them, when somebody dies, truth of the matter is, Brother Pete, guess what we know about it? Not very much. But there's tons of questions in life. There's, there's tons of questions. But I want you to look what the Bible says. And I'm going to begin here next Sunday or maybe next Wednesday or maybe tonight. You can't never tell. According as his divine power because hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life Brother Billy, you and I are going to get some answers out of this next passage because we've talked about how we don't understand people that are really good and people that follow the Bible and have a really good life, you know, but they're not saved. What's, what's the deal? This tells us. You know there are people that it would blow your mind. I, we don't really have any right now, but we have had in the past. There are people that with their reputation it would blow your mind that are faithful tithe payers that never darken a church door but they send their tithes in. I remember one church I was associated with, their biggest tithe payer, their biggest tithe payer lived over three hours away. Over three hours away. But they're blessed. You follow the principles of the Bible according to life, you're blessed. But then there's godliness. That he's given us all things, stand with me, that pertain to life and godliness. Here's that word again. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. We're going to pray for a few minutes this morning.